Hello YouTube, I'm Robbie Martin and welcome back to the channel. And today we are at Nagasaki Airport in Japan. My very first visit to Japan. And this is my very first look at the newly updated Japan scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I do like what I see. It is really, really nice. And let me just head around here and show you uh, some of the detail of the airport. And you can see that they haven't really left any holes or any gaps. It's a beautiful airport, Nagasaki in Japan. Excellent. So, we uh, today are going to be taking a flight in the TBM 930, which is uh, parked on ramp 3 and is waiting for us. Uh, the TBM is definitely my favorite aircraft. I'm looking forward to exploring the other aircrafts on this scenery. Aircrafts, actually airports, shall I say. Airports in the scenery. That's what I'm looking forward to doing. Just taking another look at this. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, very nice. I, I do like it very much. And um, All right, so the TBM. We're going to be taking a tour from uh, Nagasaki to uh, Hiroshima Island and then on to Iketsuki Bridge and then back to Saga Airport. So uh, I've just got some new livery here for the uh, TBM. Okay, very nice. Uh, in fact, it's matching the airport. Very nice. So, and uh, it shouldn't take us too long. Uh, first leg is about 105 nautical miles, and the second one is uh, around about 100 nautical miles. Uh, sorry about the jittery video there. Um, <laughs> played around so much with settings, and I uh, just have to uh, accept what I've got, really. Yeah, and basically from the, the last segment from the uh, Ikitsuki Bridge down to Saga Airport is about 130 nautical miles. Okay, so let's get into the TBM and uh, prepare the cockpit. So welcome to the cockpit of the TBM 930. And one of the first things I like to do when I enter into this cockpit is to adjust the seating position. So we can do that simply by pressing the up arrow key, like so, and just press it until you see the front of the engine cowling just over the glare shield there, and that will be your uh, correct seating position for the TBM 930. Okay, so what we want to do now is to go through our inside inspection. So what we're going to do is just look up to the overhead panel and you can see two switches here so one is the passenger oxygen switch and we'll switch that on and also the oxygen master switch as well switch that one on too and working from left to right we can just uh, check these switches are in the correct position before engine starts so taxi lights are off and pulse nav and strobe lights are off all these switches here are off on the internal lights panel and the crash bar is down which means that the battery light and generator switch are down as well and also engine start starter is on ignition is off auxiliary boost pump is in the off position and the fuel selector is in manual and autopilot trims are off Good. So we can move down now to the lower panel. Just take the yoke out of the way. So working from left downwards, we have uh, these optional functions here, air corns and fan position set as desired, cab lights off. And along the de system panel, all switches are down and off. Parking brake is set landing gear is down and uh, this here is set desired and the switches here are guarded and bleed switch is off so just looking now 
to the fuse box. Well, all these are inoperative at the moment, and hopefully, as uh, some third party software developers get a hold of this uh, TVM 3930, hopefully, we can have a study level aircraft very soon or something as close to. Okay, so just while we're here, we can check the emergency ram air is in and alternate st static source is in as well. Okay, so just put that back and just putting that back. Now looking down to the throttle, then we can see the flaps are up, throttle is down in the cutoff position and everything else is okay. Good, so that is our pre-engine uh, pre start inspection completed. So now what we can do is go to our before engine start. All right, so what we need to do now is just put some power to these three Garmin's here. So we'll operate the crash up bar and we'll put the mouse here and then we you can see the arrow pointing up so that means that we're going to be switching upwards and we'll switch the battery on and you can see the garments are initializing and normally this one doesn't come on for some reason so you have to switch it on at this point there okay so everything is on and you can see here from the left our engine parameters here. TOS system test OK. And there's a TOS system test OK message confirmation. And the ITT and just checking the oil and our fuel, which is 88 US gallons uh, per tank maximum is 150 per tank so this is going to be enough for our uh, trip today the volts is on 22 that's pretty low it should be 24.5 so it's just within the uh, two red bars here the parameters for good engine start so uh, hopefully it doesn't go down too much before that so we'll have a look at it before we uh, start the engines. A good battery voltage is essential really for good NG rotation and acceleration. Okay, so we might just get away with that. Right, so uh, before we actually start the engine, uh, we just want to have a look at where we're going to be flying today. So we are at Nagasaki Airport, that's Romeo Juliet Foxtrot Uniform. And this is going to be our end point. This is Saga airport all right so um, our first port of call is not an airport but a point of interest and that is from this point right here which is the Hashima island so it's an abandoned island that we're going to be flying around and from there we're going to go actually I'll tell you what we do um, if we go to, so we're already on the uh, main flight display panel. Okay, that's, that's the PFD home and that's the main flight display. And if we just select this button down here, we can actually zoom out and zoom in. All right. So we can zoom in a bit there. All right. And if you actually click on the top of the button, you can see that a mouse pointer control or a mouse pad actually appears. So that's really neat, isn't it? And what you can do if you just move the mouse within this area you can actually pan around so let's move to the second point of interest which we want to travel to is a bridge okay so just moving out a bit okay so that's right here So that is our next point of interest, which is the Ik, Ik, 
Iksuki Bridge. Yeah, difficult saying that. Iksuki Bridge. And we want, we want to have a look at that. And then from there, we're going to fly back to Saga Airport. So all in all, it's about 280 nautical miles uh, from Nagasaki, right the way around to the couple of points of interest and then back to uh, Saga Airport. Okay, so uh, let's have a look. So let's put this uh, back there. Okay, and let's get our airport up. So really, we, as regards flight plan, we're strictly VFR today. So um, we're not ATC and we won't need to be uh, given instructions uh, or be told where to go, what to do by ATC. All right, so uh, just looking at our current airport, our nearest airport, and that will load up. So that's where we are now. And airport info. And you can see the runways. Oh, that's how long the runways are, and uh, 3, 2, and 1, 4. Okay, and our frequencies as well. Okay, for us to con contact ATC. So we'll be doing that in just a moment. Right, and also, just going to the primary flight display. Well, actually, we'll come to that. We'll come to the speed bug. So we'll just turn them on since we're here. So there are our speed bugs. Normal takeoff uh, speed is 90 knots in this aircraft, although it does go by weight. Um, surprisingly, the more heavier you are, uh, the less this this figure is, surprisingly. OK, so right now, let's actually get back to where we were. Now I'm going to just put the ATC on and see what's happening in that area, see if we can get an ATIS at all. Right, there's no ATIS there at the moment. Okay, we'll try again. Nagasaki ATIS 126.85. There is no ATIS at all. Okay, so let's go back and okay, hopefully the ATC is working. Um, there's no problems with that. So okay, we'll we'll look at that in a minute. All right, so we haven't got any winds or anything like that at all. Right, so uh, just moving back to our checklist now. So what we want to do is get our engine started. All right, so starting the TBM 930, it's quite a simple procedure. And a lot of it has to do with just watching figures, really, on the engine panel display. And also timing as well. Timing is crucial to the starting of this aircraft. So... Uh, what we're going to do is watch out for some uh, figures. So first of all, when we uh, start the engine, two seconds, we'll have the engine ignition on for. Then we'll watch for 13%. Once it, once it reaches 13% NG, we will then apply the fuel. So we we'll move this from there, cut off to low idle. And then... Actually, we'll start the timer, so we'll put this on timer. So as soon as we switch the fuel on, uh, sorry, we switch the ignition on, we'll go straight to our timer. So we set that up and we'll start the timer, make sure that's reset. So here's your timer here. And we're looking for 30% NG before the timer reaches 30 seconds or 50% NG before the timer reaches one minute. Also, what will appear is a starter, a white starter message at the bottom here. Once that goes out, then we'll move the throttle from low idle to flight idle. Okay. All right. So uh, that actually took me some time to get into my head. Uh, it's quite simple, but 
it's just getting around those figures. Okay, so we're going to do that now and we'll have a look at that. So we'll switch on uh, auxiliary boost pump, which is here. And also our generator as well. Okay, just trying to get that up arrow. Right. Now, what we want to check is the auxiliary boost pump message is uh, highlighted there. And that is highlighted. All right. So we want to check that the propeller area is clear and shout clear. Good. And now we're going to go for engine start. So it's two seconds, then start the timer, then watch. One, two start timer watch for 13 percent 13 percent apply watch the timer there we're not looking for 30 percent we have 30 percent before 30 seconds watch for the starter at the bottom That goes off. Low idle to fly idle. And we're watching for NG. Okay, so it's reached 50 before one minute. Okay, and the ITT is is stable there in the green. Okay, this actually might go down a little bit. All right, so that is it. That is how you start the TBM 930. Okay, so we can stop the timer and reset that. Okay, so right, just making sure there's nothing else. Also, check in the checking the oil temperature and also the oil pressure as well and both are in the green right so uh, what we need to do now is go to our after engine start All right so throttle is at is at low idle ng should be 70 percent but it's 60 and that's where it's going to stay i believe all temperature we've checked. Auxiliary boost pump, uh, make sure that's on auto. Fuel selector should be auto. And fuel shift button, which is here. So I was going to put the autopilot trims on as well. So this fuel shift button, what it does, it actually does what it says on the tin, if you like. <laughs> uh, so if we can get a a wider view you see see what it does so we'll press this and it shifts this uh, little knob here so you can even do this manual if you have it switched to manual we'll have to change uh, fuel tanks every uh, every every few minutes maybe every 10 minutes Not quite sure on the exact time in there but if you just leave it on auto then it actually ship, uh, changes it for you but this is the way to do it manually all right good so we'll just make sure that is on auto which it is so the panel on the top is is actually completed so we need to also make sure we make sure we switch this to taxi before we actually taxi out okay so moving on with our after engine start checklist right so uh, generator is on and that switched on main we did that before didn't we the CAS 
Okay, so we have the normal messages, the stall heater, uh, indicators, etc. And ATC, AC is as required, and the bleed, which is here, we'll put on to auto. This does actually use up about 1% of fuel, actually having that switch to a high, high bleed. Right, okay, so uh, before taxing, but before taxing checklist, standby instruments. I want to make sure our barrow is checked as well. 29.92. Our main flight display panel that's checked, and we we did do our our speed bugs here. Let's have a look. Speed bugs, yes, they're all on. Okay. Weather radar is here. So have a look at the weather radar. And you can adjust that by adjusting this knob here at the bottom once again. And nothing's appearing there. All right. And we can go back to our map by selecting home. Okay. So let's just zoom in a bit more to the airport. Right. So hopefully we'll be taken off on runway 32 that's the closest one to us and just having a look at the uh, primary flight display as well so we have uh, nav source if we did have a, a flight plan set up you'd actually select FMS then that would appear in magenta uh, also, these two screens are twins, <laughs> so what one does, the other one does as well. The other one follows, so um, they're, they're both exactly the same. All right, but this one operates independently. The main flight display. Now uh, we have a minimums uh, page here. Um, we can set 200 uh, for that. We have PFD settings, so. You can actually set up the angle of attack, which is this one here. It's always pointing there for some reason, um, so I've yet to see it move. But that can be either on, off, or on auto. All right. And wind. So you have different options here. So if I just select option one, you can see this is how it will display the wind. And option two. And the one I prefer is option three. Okay, and as you move about, you'll actually see this direction change. So when you're actually on the runway, it's quite handy because it shows you graphically uh, which way the wind is actually blowing. Okay, so you can see directly if you have a crosswind takeoff or crosswind landings, etc. Okay, so going back home and going to main main flight display. All right. So if you want to set up a flight plan, then you would actually do it here. If you preload a flight plan, then it would automatically uh, appear here as well. It does take a, a few seconds to actually load it into the aircraft once you set up a flight plan from uh, the, the flight planner on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, and this is your, as we said, your nearest, your, your nav aids nearest navage to your aircraft okay so let's just continue with our our list right so uh, okay the other thing I need to mention as well so as we continue through our before taxi and checklist the uh, de-icing system so while it's flashing there we'll just might as well put it on now uh, pito, pito and stall heater. All right, we don't need these yet. And also the inert separator. Okay, now what this does, if you have a look at the front engine inlet, just under the prop there, right to the front, there's this uh, great big scoop. And what this does, this actually operates a couple of flaps within, just under the engine and it just prevents any foreign debris, any foreign matter from entering into the engine whilst taxiing out. 
and uh, that's the sole function of the inert separator right so it'd be put on before tax in and uh, you can uh, take it off uh, as and when you're airborne and uh, just before uh, when landing and before uh, taxiing in okay and here are your lights test okay and also we have check gear is down and lights test uh, indicators there okay so right so that is it so you have a little indicator here saying that your inert inertial separator is on so we'll leave that there for now we'll just give a check on the engine instruments once again so we're uh, at a cool 613 degrees and we're still at 60 and you notice the battery voltage has now gone up to 29 as now we're generating our own energy through the prop okay and the amps are in the green as well um, EFIS, I say EFIS, sorry, it's A320 Airbus I'm looking at. <laughs> uh, just having a look at the top panel there, EIS. And right, so our altitude, well, as we're VFR, it's pretty much up to us, really. Um, okay, so altitude. So we'll set that for around uh, 15,000. So as we said, this aircraft can go to 31,000 feet. Won't be going that high today. All right, so 31,000 feet. Now with this alt button, actually when you're in there and you click this, it actually resets it to the altitude that you're at. Right, 15,000 and a heading button. If you press that on top, you notice here the blue indicator there. If you press that, it will actually center it to your current heading, which is a handy feature. Uh, it maybe could save you a lot of winding uh, towards that heading anyway. Uh, okay, so our. Okay, let's find out where ATC is going to be putting us. So we are heading to the south, so we want to want to request um, a south departure. Alright, so request taxi depart south. Nagasaki ground Dr. Lee McQuid Bank Delta. Bravo Romeo Charlie with November request taxi for takeoff departure to the south. Dr. Lee McQuid Bank Delta. Bravo Romeo Charlie taxi to an hold short of oh, runway 322. Taxi way 3 Papa 2 Tango 1. Contact tower on 118 decimal flight when ready. The thing I, um, I don't quite like about this. Uh, system. Actually, let's just acknowledge this first. Taxiing hold short runway three two using taxiway three Papa two Tango one Docker Bravo Romeo Charlie. Okay, so I was saying that with um, for those of us who have used and are accustomed with P three D, the ATC gives you the option of cancelling the pilot voice so you actually can respond verbally now with MSFS there's no such option now you can turn the ATC voices off but you are unable to turn off the pilot voice and I, I think that's a shame really because you know I like to actually respond myself and it gives me good training for that sim flying um, but hopefully Microsoft will improve on this and give you the option and the ability to actually turn off the pilot voice. Okay, so that's my my little gripe <laughs> for MSF um, MSFS 2020. Okay, so now we are going to uh, so we're basically going to be turning right and heading down there. So let's do that, shall we? 
Right, so with taxiing out, um, it's very, very easy to just take off the parking brakes and move off. But uh, the correct way to do it is actually to put pressure on the uh, brakes. And let me check. Check it's all clear. He's out the way. Okay, and they're out the way. So I put pressure on the brakes. Um, apply a bit of throttle. You see the torque. There is a bit of um, latency actually. So I need to watch that. Okay, so the torque is moving up. And then we take off the parking brake and start moving. Actually, not start moving, we'll just take the parking brake off. And then we can control the movement of the aircraft by letting go or releasing the brakes. Alright. Oh, I didn't get him. Good. Now the video might be a little bit jittery and uh, that's because I'm running a 1660 GTX uh, Ti NVIDIA graphics card and I have been tweaking around so much with settings I think most, most people have Okay, let's put a bit more throttle on I think most people have very very difficult to actually get uh, smooth video um, it, it, and it depends I mean you, you've got such a detailed airport here at Nagasaki the beautifully created airport here um, in this new Japan update really really nice and it's a load more scenery which is going to use uh, a lot more frame rates well there we are that's uh, that's how it goes so I do apologize in advance for any jittery video here just having a look at this lovely airport as we as we taxi out look at that beautiful isn't it absolutely beautiful Okay. I do like the camera um, behind the uh, primary flight display. That is very, very nice indeed. It does actually help you to taxi. The pedals here on the, is, is quite sensitive actually. On the takeoff roll, it's a little bit tricky to try and keep this aircraft centered. Okay, so what we have here is the uh, is another map display. Okay, and that can actually show you where you are. So maybe I can switch this one here to a wider view. Uh, so I won't have to adjust it during takeoff. Right, so we'll switch. We'll actually just select our runway heading. To 320. Okay, let's go back a bit quicker. Okay, so 320, 320 is our runway heading, and you can see the winds, which way it's actually pointing out at the moment at two knots. OK, 
get back to the correct seating adjustment there. Okay, good. So we'll keep our, our feet on the brakes. Oops, I've just actually put it into. As a thing, my hand keeps knocking off these uh, these throttles here. Right, so we'll put it into parking, and we'll cancel that alert. Okay, so we'll just go through our before takeoff checklist, so or before lineup checklist, should I say? Okay, so landing lights. Now I know. See, I haven't turned the taxi lights on. Terrible, terrible. Okay, it didn't actually appear on the uh, before taxi before taxi checklist. Uh, quite surprisingly. Okay, well that's done now. Uh, so we want to set our external lights. And ignition is uh, auto and auxiliary boost pump is in auto, fuel selector is auto and uh, autopilot trims are on. Okay. What else now? So de-icing systems, well that's been uh, set we can leave those as required inertial separator is still on at the moment uh, trims uh, we need to have a look at our trims so our trims need to be set because they are well out you can see the trims moving up there okay so we'll put them in the in the green area Okay, and the rudder trims, I actually leave it where it is because uh, I've tried put, putting it in the green and it really is just not working for um, me at the moment. It's caused all sorts of problems. So I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, flaps uh, on takeoff, and you notice that the flaps only have uh, three positions that is clean or up, and takeoff and landing. And that is it. We want to try and withdraw or retract the flaps at about 115 nautical miles an hour uh, once we uh, take off. And so the bleed is on and our speed bugs are checked. Our fuel gauges, that's checked. Amateur, that is below 50 amps. Yep, amateur is good in the green range. Okay, so our top panel is checked. Okay, and altimeter setting right. That we didn't get because we've got no ATC at the moment. All right, so uh, that is an important thing. We'll just reset this and um, given on the barometric pressure there okay so we have no uh, procedure here so we're straight out and uh, the squawk is down here and that's set for 7000 okay 
All right, so we are ready for takeoff then. We'll go through a takeoff checklist as soon as we get on the runway and lined up. So we'll contact ATC. So let's get in touch with Tower. Okay, so requesting clearance VFR from Nagasaki Tower. Nagasaki Tower, Dr. Lima, Quebec Delta, Bravo, Romeo, Charlie, and runway 32 ready for takeoff south departure. Dr. Lima, Quebec Delta, Bravo, Romeo, Charlie, cleared for takeoff runway 32 south departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 32, Dr. Bravo, Romeo, Charlie. Okay, so we're clear for takeoff. There's no wind uh, information there, so we'll, we'll take it from here. So it looks like we got, looks like we're going to have a crosswind there. All right, so we'll check that there's nothing coming. Okay, so we're all clear. Uh, put pressure on the uh, brakes, increase throttle. And uh, we'll take the parking brake off. Right, this the rudder pedals are very twitchy at the moment, so hopefully I can maintain the runway line. Center line. Need to adjust that. This aircraft just wants to go, even just a little bit of thrust, and it wants to just run away with you. Okay. Okay, so we're on center line, and we'll just go for a takeoff uh, checklist. So we check runway head in here, it's 32, 32, and uh, prop speed, we're going to get that to 100. And rotation speed is going to be at 90 knots. And we're going to watch out for our speeds on the takeoff there. So, all right, let's go for that. So 50%, first of all, try and get the engines, the engine, should I say, not engines. So I used to flying multi-engined aircraft. Okay, so looks like we're stable there and TBM, you'd have to give a lot of uh, right rudder because uh, it does have a tendency, the torque, to pull you away. Okay, so flaps up, we're past the 115 mark and gears up. Okay, looks like we have a gear safe on this. Gear safe message. Okay. 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 I'm not sure why that took place actually. It's a gear safe. Interesting. Alright, so the flaps weren't the flaps weren't actually retracted. So well they are now. And hopefully there's no damage been done. Right, so what we'll do, we'll take a left. Oops. Oops, wow, this is like. I'm not sure what's happening here. Nagasaki Tower, Dr. Lima, Quebec Delta, Bravo Romeo, Charlie, frequency change. I'm 
not sure why why, why that actually, why, why that happened really. Okay, now pitch up is 10 degrees on this aircraft, so I'm going to try and maintain 10 degrees of pitch. As we bank round to round about our 180 heading. That was a bit weird. Um, I just felt my controls uh, non-functional for a second until I gave it a bit of a jerk. Right, so let us adjust our view once again. And there's our airport. That's Nagasaki. Turn to the right a little bit. Right, so we need to complete an after takeoff checklist. So landing gear is up, flaps are up. Torque max should be 100%, we're just touching that. EIS is uh, checked, 15,000, selected. CAS, we can turn off our inertial separator. De icing system, not needed at the moment. Okay, so that's a bit of wind. Uh, okay, just turn down our torque. zoom out to check our position. So we're going to be turning to the right a bit more. Torque down. Okay. About 10,000 feet. I think we'll, we'll leave it there for now because uh, we're going to be Point of interest very soon in this aircraft. We're at 167 as it is. Okay, so we're going to level out because we'll be descending very soon. So if you remember, we're heading to this spot right here. Right, so if we click the heading, the knob, then remember I said that actually adjust our heading uh, directly, save us from winding it on. There's actually about 505 islands uh, in Japan, and Hashima Island being one of them.
Okay, so we're on our heading now to uh, Hashima Island, and I'm going to be just descending. Yeah, just reducing a little bit of power. So we don't have to make a sudden descent as we near. We've got there quite quickly, haven't we? That's 100. We're just about halfway now. 100 and. Well, yeah, 105 nautical miles. Just reducing throttle, and you can see that we are. <laughs> almost there really it's crazy so we really the thing with this aircraft is that to, to get it to slow down is just it, it's um, it's not easy you've really got to plan ahead in fact one TBM real world TBM pilot said that in most GA aircraft GA aircraft you have to plan about 5 nautical miles ahead but this aircraft you have to plan about 30 nautical miles ahead so you can see our point of interest on the left. So we're there already. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do now is just try and lose some altitude. saying landing gear. I don't know why. Alright. Not sure why it's saying landing gear to be honest with you. Uh, I did notice that on, on takeoff it was already up. Gear on safe, landing gears down. Let's put it up. Make sure everything is okay there. Yeah, it's up. Okay, good. Right, so let's try and lose some altitude, and we got speed down to about 143. So, okay, so we're going to take a big circle round and just try to get our altitude. down a bit more. So 4,000 feet. Three eight. So I would take a left turn and hopefully by then we would have shed uh, about a thousand feet from our altitude. To remember to keep selecting our correct seating position there. Now, this map is very deceiving. It, it makes you think you're quite far away, but you're you're quite close. Two thousand two hundred, and we should have the island in sight. 
Okay, so we'll leave it there for now. Or maybe just a little bit lower. Okay, so there it is. So 155. Okay, so I'm going to apply just a little bit more thrust. A little bit of trim. Okay, so at one three. So if I can get low enough safely so we can have a good look at this island. One thousand feet. And you can see our radio altitude there is registering uh, one thousand feet AGL. Or ASL should I say? <clears throat> Excuse me. 900. Okay. Right, now there's a point of interest on the left. So I'll just try and circle around that, trying to watch the altitude. Keep a good throttle setting. Just watching the altitude there, we're about 700 feet. Okay, there we are. So there's Hashima Island, commonly called Gunkanjima. So it's an abandoned island of Nagasaki. Uh, it's about 15 kilometers uh, from the center of the city. And uh, like I said, it's one of the five, uh, 505 uninhabited islands in the Nagasaki prefecture and one of its notable features is is the abandoned concrete buildings and it's absolutely untouched by by man it's just been battered by the elements over the years. Just watching this altitude. detail on it is superb isn't it and it's quite a tourist spot as well okay just watching the bank Okay, so that's Hashima Island. So now, as we're pointing north, we'll head straight on to Ikitsuki Bridge.
I do like the heat effects there on the left hand side just by the engine exhaust very good, very authentic right so, so this leg is about 129 nautical miles and we're kind of like heading north Northwest, so I guess get the map. Okay. Right, so we're actually heading up here, so um, seems like a fair distance, doesn't it? a bit more, you head straight to this point here. Right, so what I'm going to do is set the, uh, we'll select 10,000 feet as opposed to 15. <clears throat> Okay, so we have 10,000 feet and we'll select, uh, in fact your damper should have been on, it's one of, one of the things I've, that's not on the <laughs> checklist and we'll set heading, so just click heading, put that there and then now we can select uh, autopilot and flight level change. And you notice here it's going to creep up to our flight level of 10,000 feet. So you, you can actually manage your um, vertical speed by clicking the VS knob here and adjusting it as you see fit there. So at the moment we're climbing up 1,900 uh, uh, feet per minute. view from the back seat there. There certainly are a lot more places to discover in this Japan scenery update, absolutely, and I hope to do uh, many more flights in this scenery. The detail is amazing. Interestingly, on the TBM 940, there is an auto throttle system. So that's a nice little feature welcomed by TBM pilots. So another feature as well is what you call the uh, home safe. There's a little button there on the, I think it's TBM 910, whoops, whoa, what was that? <laughs> TBM 910 and the TBM 940, there is a home safe button here, which um, it's for passengers really, if the pilot becomes incapacitated uh, for some reason, the passenger would just depress the button perhaps for a short period of time maybe three seconds just to activate the home safe feature and what that will do that will actually uh, set the aircraft to fly autonomously and it would actually search for a appropriate airfield nearby 
appropriate airfield because the idea is to get the aircraft down as soon as possible and as safely as possible. Okay, let's just adjust our heading then and see we are actually not quite. So we need to select heading and then don't want to burn more fuel than we need to. Okay, so you can see as we turn video is struggling to keep up with the adjusted scenery looks like it's time for a graphics card update definitely okay let's just turn a little bit more so we head into this one here Okay, so we are almost at 10,000 feet altitude set, and we should maintain this altitude there. You can see here from the uh, flight mode enunciator, we have heading, autopilot, your damper, alt, and 10,000 feet there, and that's the comms over there. So we can actually maybe select um, our comms. Now that shaking thing, that's a bit, that's what we had on takeoff, didn't we? Okay, so as I was saying with the home safe, so once the button is pressed, it will uh, fly autonomously, autonomously, <laughs> and send message messages to um, the nearest an ATC, alert messages, and it would also uh, send messages to nearby aircraft as well. So, and that using its GPS system it would actually scan for the nearest available uh, runway and actually land at the aircraft itself and it will have uh, voice announcers to assure passengers uh, of their safety what to do and all the passenger has to do really is just to sit back and make sure seatbelts are on and if they wish they can talk to ATC but they'll have to do that from the uh, first officer's uh, the, the adja uh, adjacent seat here and if there are more than one if there's more than one uh, passenger in the aircraft then um, if they put the headphones on they can actually talk to each other okay so um, this is a revolutionary system by uh, the DEA company on the TBM aircraft the TBM 910 and 940 Models have the uh, the home safe button, so that's a nice feature. Not sure how comfortable I would feel though. <laughs> um, just pressing the button, and let the aircraft do it. Uh, obviously, being interested in flying, I would uh, not press the button and bring the aircraft home myself. probably use that as a golden opportunity to fly a TBM. <laughs> okay, so um, just having a look at the uh, G3000, really this, this is just a shadow of what the real G3000 can do. Um, this aircraft is the G3000 here are very very basic good but very basic um, in the real G3000s you've got tiled screens and all sorts <laughs> um, okay but you know this is stock aircraft let's not forget that and um, you know there's no way Microsoft is going to make a study level aircraft um, out on its simulator so and I suppose in a way that's good because it gives third-party software developers the opportunity to improve on what's already here and uh, you know I just look forward to companies like um, PMDG uh, into airlines that company sure if they're going to make smaller GA aircraft. Aerosoft, once again, the uh, 
specialize in the uh, heavy aircraft A320, A330s and uh, so on and so forth so yeah I'm not sure which aircraft will actually which company is actually going to take on the TBM I hope one of them do it'd be a shame if we had to stick with a with stock aircraft okay so I'm not even actually I'm not even at a hundred percent not even a, not even there right okay that for some reason is drifting off <laughs> I'm not quite sure why all right autopilot is still in and I'm going to turn the heading off oh look at that wow that is did you see that wow what was that I don't know uh, okay let's push the all right so what I'm going to, I'm going to do now is slow down take the autopilot off actually so you hear that noise that um, tells me the autopilot was just taken off I've just had to adjust the rudder because my yoke was uh, facing <laughs> left and the steering here was um, was centered so I had to adjust the yoke there so I can uh, get them both working on the same page Okay, so um, I'm not going to fall into the trap again of believing that I'm far away from this um, next point of interest because um, we are not. I believe it's just over there, so we're looking for the Ikitsuku Bridge. All right, so I'm going to just reduce reduce throttle and try and get this aircraft down. In altitude, sorry, eight seven thousand at the moment. Oops. Right, so where is this bridge? Okay, so it really on top of it almost. Look at that once again. Ah, it's just down there. Can you see it? This is where the bridge is. So I'm going to have to lose altitude just circling around this island and reduce throttle. Ah, that's why it's saying landing gear because I've actually reduced throttle all the way. Just like the Cessna, really, if you. Uh, Reduce throttle completely, then gives you the landing gear warning, doesn't it? Okay, so we are obviously increasing in speed, and yeah. So what we'll do, we'll just just lose altitude, and then we'll we'll, we'll deal with the speed afterwards. So you can see that in the TBM there's there's, there's a few uh, glitches that need to be worked on. I'm not sure why we got that shape, that shudder on takeoff or when the autopilot was disconnected. Right, so we're at 37. I'm trying to go down a bit more so we can get good good view at the bridge. Hopefully the Japanese authorities don't uh, see me. I haven't actually filed. <laughs> to stoop this low okay so just making sure I check engine 
make sure they're okay fuel is checked right so what I'll do now just is just try and so we're at 1900 I'll just try and circle around uh, this island so we can come up by the side of the uh, bridge right keeping an eye on the airspeed uh, a bit of trim a bit of up trim we're just at the tip of this island look at the trees beautiful that is very nice very nice indeed Do you know what? I, I haven't actually been in my my P3D uh, for a while. I did try to uh, make a flight the other day on my um, on my P3D because I have to keep up uh, my flying on the uh, virtual airline, which is uh, Virtual uh, United Airlines. One flight per month. Otherwise, they chuck you out. <laughs> They're very strict that way. They don't want uh, dormant pilots. Very, very good um, virtual airlines to be with. Been with them for about three years, going on four years now. Uh, this February coming. Very good. Uh, I would recommend joining up with a virtual uh, airline. Definitely, as it really does give you a flying purpose, and you're you're with a community, aren't you? With, um, those who are on your pilot roster as well. Right, 120. So I'm going to add a bit of uh, thrust. Okay, so I'm going to try and get low. Right, is the landing light off? No, it's not off. Turn it off. Right. Okay. Okay, so let's see what this bridge is all about. So this is a Ikitsuku bridge, and it's a continuous truss bridge that connects Ikitsuku with uh, Hirado Island. And it was completed in 1991. Yeah, it's pretty recent, isn't it? Really. Get okay. Now just got to watch out for these mountains here. We are pretty low. And we'll just get a little bit a little view of the bridge. Just being careful of my bank angle there. Sorry about that. Okay, we did get a nice look of it uh, on the last turn. the Ikitsuku Bridge. Okay, so that <laughs> uh, that is that. So its main span is uh, 400 
meters. So it's the longest truss bridge in the world. Okay, so now we're going to head back to our final uh, destination, which is Osaka Airport. So uh, we'll what we can do now is set up our uh, destination. So, um, right, let's put nearest nearest airport. Okay, right. Keeping an eye on the flying as well as there we go, Saga. Okay, and we do a direct two. Activate. Okay. See what's happening outside. Right, there we go. So we'll just bank left a bit. Okay, so we've already got the FMS there uh, selected, so that's why we have it up here. So all we have to do is get back onto our target line and follow it all the way. Okay, just checking our engine instruments, our torque, well, it should be up to about 100% really, so we'll adjust that slowly and try not to get an over condition as well. Wow, look at that. Amazing. I have not finished with Japan. <laughs> Absolutely not. take us that long to get back to uh, Saga Airport. Okay, so we're looking at one one twelve. So we'll set the heading, set heading knob, and we'll we still have ten thousand feet adjusted on the altitude. So we'll click on the altitude, and we'll uh, click on autopilot. You notice it dips there. Why I don't know. Okay, now you can see what's happening. Look. <laughs> okay, let's take it off the heading. And we'll try again. I don't know why it's happened, so there's a glitch there. It was like it was being blown off course, isn't it? Right, so let's try and get it back on our heading. Okay, just making sure there's nothing that... Okay, flight director should be on. Alright, so let's try again. Set the heading up. And we'll press heading. Right, look. It's, it's not doing anything. Not doing anything at all. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Right, so it does not want to follow instructions at the moment. Uh, so it's going to be hands on. Alright, let's zoom out and let's just see. Oops, that kind of zoom out. 
it's tricky uh, keeping the mouse on the uh, dials here okay all right so it looks a long way but uh, it's not we'll be there shortly I'm still trying to work out why this I tell you what let's let's keep it on the let's keep it on nav let's see if the nav will do anything for us right nav nav no 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 it's not doing that at all sorry about this well well what is going on here okay that doesn't seem to be working right so let's just uh, adjust the trims and maintain 10,000 feet okay I'm not quite sure what's happening here I'm going to just take off out and take off everything all right even take off your damper and put it back on again okay so we have the aircraft straight level at the moment Right, so let's just uh, let's try this again. Right, so heading is set. Altimeter, uh, we're a little bit high. If we press the Alt, it will just okay. Right, so we're going to select autopilot. not having it is it heading no no it's not doing it it's not doing it okay let's forget about that wow wow look at that okay forget about that because I think we're gonna do more damage than uh, what we want okay so it's hands-on all right look how far we traveled look we are near our destination so I'm actually going to be making my descent okay now Saga Airport so uh, what we're looking at here is uh, Saga Airport nearest where are we okay checking outside making sure we're not Let's see what we'll do we'll just uh, adjust that a bit so we can try and keep a, a view outside let's go right a bit Nearest airport. Scroll down. There's quite a lot of airports in the vicinity, so maybe we have to wait till we get a bit closer. Okay. Right, not there yet. So I'll wait until we get a bit closer. Um, but the. I believe it's going to be runway 29. So we'll try and get on the right of it, on the right base. Right, let's just get um, ATC up. So, nearest airport request, it might be up here. Ah, Saga. 
RJ Romeo Juliet Foxtrot Sierra. Okay, so right now the aircraft is doing this I don't want to know thing at the moment. Okay, so chin traffic on one two two decimal liner. One way two nine. Okay, so we will make our announcement shortly. Uh, just to, just to stay our intention. So we'll take a left turn so we can get a good uh, view of the. Right, so we're still high at the moment. Let's just reduce our altitude. Just trim it down a bit. So we're going to fly downwind. Uh, so the heading we're looking for is 29 uh, 118 let's have a look so it's a 29 a heading that's a runway heading that is 272 281 286 Good, 2 nine. so we're just there on the 2 nine heading, and that is uh, the runway just there. So we basically are going to just uh, keep on this heading, and we're going to go out and take our time losing this altitude, and making sure that we keep the speed um, around about 170. Um, you can actually put the gears down now to be honest with you so we can actually keep uh, our speed down so yeah so anything below 178 is um, is okay to put our landing gear down and also the first stage of flaps as well we'll leave the flaps just for a little bit longer right so what we'll do we'll try and get The airport, so that's Romeo Juliet Foxtrot Sierra. I always forget the IKEA code for that one. Right, so waypoint. Nope. So let's select here Romeo Juliet Foxtrot. Sierra. Okay, try and maintain that heading, Robbie. And select. Okay, so we're looking for runways. There you are, two niner. All right, that's the runway just down there. And we're at 147, so we can apply the first stage of flaps. Okay, there we go. Press that button a little bit harder. Okay, you can feel the aircraft now has uh, wants to pitch up a bit. Okay, just watching that speed. Just a little bit of throttle. Okay, so the landing speed in the TBM 930 is 85 nautical miles an hour. Okay, so pretty much the same as any GA aircraft really, like a Cessna or a Piper, even though it's just slightly above there. Okay, so just try and keep on our downwind heading. Right, and what we're looking for are frequencies. Now, yes, good, we've got an ILS runway 29er, and that is 118.15. So we can select that and we can put that in nav 1 in the active frequency. Go to primary flight display, and then we can have our source which is nav1 and now you can see that we have our um, ILS there and what we need to do is actually set up our heading on the course now if we can okay so that localizer there is on 2 niner anyway how are we doing for altitude? Right, so okay, so 4,000, and we want to try and kill that 
altitude a little bit more. Speed is a nice 137. Looks like the winds have calmed down a lot, not throwing us around like it was. Uh, how do you adjust the... I thought that would actually adjust the, um, the course here. Recenter. No, but it appears right. It's uh, pointed to 2.9, so maybe it's, maybe it's automatically set up. Okay, so uh, let's get this oh, MFD and then we can actually select that. Okay, it's a little bit more and then we can uh, center it there. Good. Okay, so let's just announce uh, full stop land, select a runway for landing, 2.9. I think we've done that. Um, now, it's doing that, the aircraft is doing this. I don't want to know thing at the moment. Uh, so announce full stop landing, announce position. Romeo Juliet, Foxtrot, Sierra traffic, Dumber Lima, Quebec Delta, Bravo Romeo Charlie, 8 miles southeast, 3100 feet inbound to land runway 29er. Right, I'm going to make a turn now towards the airport. Okay, um, something's happening. It seems like when I touch this, the aircraft doesn't want to know. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, so let's just take a left turn onto um, our base. Uh, you see the runway there, just there. So that's nice. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's happening, but there's a period where um, I'm losing control. I don't have flight control, so I'm not sure if it's to do with touching this. Um, because you know, if you go to your uh, showcase, you go to an outside view, you won't be able to actually uh, control the aircraft uh, from your throttle system. So, um, well, we're discovering new things, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Right, so on base now. And we're going to announce on final. Romeo Juliet, Fox Trot, Sierra Traffic, Dr. Lima, Quebec Delta. Bravo Romeo Charlie is on final runway to Niner to land. Right, okay. There seems to be a glitch as to when ATC is speaking or something to do with this box here. Let's actually take it off that and put it on there. Because I had it actually on windowed mode. Maybe that's the reason why. Right. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to get ourselves across onto the uh, localizer and glide slope. You can see here uh, our glide slope indicator. So the green there is indicating that we need to descend. So we'll do that. Radio altitude has just popped up. Now remembering that this aircraft doesn't want to slow down. So what I'm going to do is just raise the nose slightly. Almost as if we're on a helicopter, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so kill off our speed and then I'm going to select uh, landing flaps. There we go. So we have a landing checklist to look at, don't we? Approach, okay, minimums, that's set, isn't it? Altimeters, uh, check. Uh, landing. Speed bugs, well, they're set. Okay, so we're at 178, so we need to make sure that don't slow down too much. Okay, so I'm mainly just looking outside now. I don't want to get bogged down with uh, frequencies and so on and so forth. So we have the green dot 
uh, centered nicely and our speed is 94 that will drop off as we approach uh, just trying to maintain okay set up the correct view okay so landing gear is down flaps are full a little bit trim there take the pressure off the yoke select our view back again right inertial separator on Landing lights on. Okay, and so we are actually at the correct uh, approach speed. Just adjusting the trims there because I'm pulling back uh, too much. I need to let it relax. And that's the warning message for the inertial separator. Okay, so ILS, uh, we're in target for that. Um, just go to the right a bit more. This aircraft does get a bit bouncy on the way down over the runway. So you can see our torque is about 37%. Full flaps, uh, landing gear as well. And you do have reverse thrust as well on this aircraft. Just reducing throttles now as we touch the threshold of the runway, but not too much. Hopefully, just letting this aircraft just uh, find its own way down. Really, I'm going to give it slightly slight back pressure. And you do have um, reverse, I'll put that on. Yeah. Just for demonstration purposes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have landed. Saga Airport. Now we're going to have to backtrack uh, on ourselves a little bit. I don't think that's a taxi off there. It doesn't have a very wide steering arc, um, this aircraft, I've noticed. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll just announce as we are on um, uh, one to two decimal eight zero. Okay, just try and get off this. Okay, there is no clear off runway um, on this side here, so that's about it really.
Uh, retracting the flaps. Okay, so I suppose we just find our own parking really. There's no there's no one to call. <laughs> so choose where to go, Robbie. Choose where to go. Alright. Let's just go around here. You can see the uh, video is getting a bit jittery with the uh, heavy um, scenery there. So, uh, hasn't been too bad though. Uh, six gigabyte of <laughs> video RAM. Uh, do need a little bit more. Uh, perhaps eight gigabytes might just see me through. Okay, just touch the brakes there and just bring it to a stop. Right, good, we've made it. So we'll keep our feet on uh, the brakes and then reduce throttles and put, set the parking brake and then we can release and cancel the warning message. Okay, so that is that. Um, the only thing we have to do now is the shutdown procedure. So it's not just a matter of um, just shutting off really. So the shutdown uh, procedure is uh, you want to just turn off all uh, exterior lights. So just turn that off. Alright, uh, check the lights are off. Autopilot trims off. Should you select on manual bleed? off and uh, to shut the engines down it, the throttle has to be idle for two minutes okay so we're looking at two minutes we didn't start the timer so um, I think we've been here for a minute already so uh, we, we can just start the timer really Uh, start it for a minute. There we go. So there's your nav one there, and that was the um, yes, the ILS frequency. You can see there it's got bleed off and auto select. That's to do with your fuel, your fuel switch. Yeah, fuel switch selector there. Okay, so 33 seconds. One of the things I, I, I forgot to do on takeoff is to feather the throttle. Okay, and you do that by moving that across to um, low idle and then move it back to uh, flight idle. Then you move it back. So, feather basically the throttles twice. Okay, so we are. now past the two minute section so we'll put it into low idle and once you do that it's at 15 seconds at low idle and you notice the propellers and the ITT will start rising notice the how quickly it's rising so you can't leave it there there for too long and then you shut down
Listen to that. That sounded good, didn't it? Right, so... We want to just turn off the auxiliary boost pump. Oops, turn it off. And the inertial separator. And so just make sure that the auxiliary boost pump message uh, is on, off rather. Well, it says cast message auxiliary boost pump on. Let's have a look. On, I believe. Let's have a look. Let's see what it says. Oh, there it is. Well, I think you're supposed to turn it to on and then off. Uh, for what reason, I don't know, but we'll, we'll turn that off. Uh, generator off. Okay. And then we can put the crash lever down, really. So that is it for our flight. Uh, first flight in Japan. I hope you enjoyed the points of interest we covered. Uh, I'm going to look for some more and see what else, uh, what other flights I can do in this TBM 930. It certainly is a, a, a wonderful aircraft to fly. Uh, a few glitches, which I hope uh, with future updates will be ironed out. I've been looking for the updates, uh, the couple of updates we've just had, and there's not been much on the TBM 930. So hopefully Microsoft will actually um, give this aircraft more serious attention and realize that there is a growing interest out there in the flight sim community and they really do need to focus on this aircraft um, uh, as a, a popular choice of GA aircraft. Okay, so uh, we'll just finalize by pulling the crash bar down. Uh, and that's it. And there comes my logbook. <laughs> okay, we'll just um, continue. All right, yeah, that was a bit of a, a bit of a surprise. Okay, so that is it. That's the um, TBM 930. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the, the flight. Uh, had one or two glitches, one or two surprises, but. Nevertheless, was able to just demonstrate what the TBM 930 can do. So thank you so much for watching. Please, if you do like these videos or this video, please do click the like button and subscribe button. And also don't forget to check that bell and notification so you can be notified of any future videos. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.